Tell you what, Jesse. It's about time we had ourselves a hot girl summer. I think this is just the duel. What? <laughs> what? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today is July 2nd at 4 o'clock. It's hot as hell. And you know what? For all the boats that we've owned in the past, we've never had one that we could actually take out on the lake on a holiday and enjoy for a day because they're all mostly pieces of crap. Today, maybe that will change. Ladies and gentlemen, behind this door is a boat that I got for free that we're going to see if we can make run and put back on the lake to take to Clear Lake, Iowa on the 4th and watch the fireworks. Okay, so, as stated, this is a boat that I got for free a couple years ago and has been sitting in Denny's old corn crib ever since. Let's see how it fared. I literally haven't seen this in two years. I think we took the tarp off once and looked at it when I got it and confirmed the engine was free and then shoved it in here. Oh. <laughs> oh, All right, well, add that to the list of things to fix. Aha! Well, it's still here. She might be, oh, she's full of water, but the tarp did its job. Don't you also need to like register this? Yes, there's no title. <laughs> this was actually in really good shape when I put it in here, so let's see how it is. Let's drag it out and get the tarp off. What do you say? Sounds like a plan. Ah, yes. Brings back memories, just like I left it. Look at that. Oh, hey, look, tires. <laughs> I've probably been looking for those. Tom Sawyer Trisonic. Uh, as you can tell, interior, really nice. I think it's cleaned up. It looks like it survived sitting in the grain bin or the, the corn crib with no roof pretty well. Pretty sure this has got a Chevy four cylinder in it, like a Mercruiser 120, which I believe was derived from not the Iron Duke, but the earlier four banger, like the 153 from like Chevy twos. Okay, so it's been four years since it's been on the water. It's not bad. We can, we can pull this off in 36 hours. Obviously, we made it home. Let's get this sucker cleaned up. It's not going to take much. This is in really good shape. Best boat we've ever got. I hope this shapes up to be an easy video. I mean, we don't always have to struggle for a video. Come on. Give us at least one where we get to enjoy a holiday instead of suffer through it with a camera. Oh, look at how much shit's coming off. Dude, this is oh actually my God. a really nice boat. All right, let's get to scrubbing. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, Jesse, there it is, the fruits of our labors. The only problem I've seen is this guy. He's loose, which isn't... The biggest problem besides you know me flying off in the interstate but this rubber seal is not sealing this giant three quarter inch hole and water goes through holes and boats don't like having water in them ladies and gentlemen the mirror cruiser 120 this is not an iron duke like i said earlier this is a chevy 2 motor i was gonna say there's a bit of work we have to do our um, mechanical pump must be dead ah. this was sitting under the carburetor you know what let's just put this back down and then we'll We'll finish vacuuming it out so we feel good about ourselves. Like, damn, we got a nice boat, and then we'll deal with the stuff that doesn't work. The light oh stick. Oh my god. Backup propulsion. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's primary propulsion. This is backup propulsion. <laughs> How are things in there, Jesse? Uh, well, I removed a lot of leaves. Ow. There's a lot more in the very front in front of that. Oh, good, 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 good. In the meantime, we've got Mook here 
who's got the perfect shirt on for the job. Nice. You can <laughs> buy those? Yeah. What are you here for, Mook? I'm standing the step back here, apparently. Hell yeah, we thought it was good enough. It was worth going into the basement and finding some stain from 92. Ooh. And Ooh. putting it on here and seeing what happens with one of my old, really old junkyard dig shirts. You can't find this color anymore, but you can still find Junker Dig shirts at junkyarddigs.com. I got some on the boat. Okay, well now you're fired. Okay, bye. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't fire her. <laughs> She's the only mook we have. Now that looks pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, how's the uh, teak going, mook? Dark. Ooh, it is very dark. That Looks should should average out to something real nice, though. We're literally staining wood on a boat. We don't even know if the engine's free. Hey, the boat was free. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> okay, batteries in. Jesse, question while you're down there. See those two rust trails? Yeah. What's above those? I don't notice anything above this one, but this one, there appears to be some sort of drain. Either way, there's a battery. Throw the key. Let's see what happens. All right. Hey. Hello. Stop. Nothing. Okay. Well, this is probably a points ignition system. So let's go ahead and pop that cap off and see what we got underneath. See if we need to sand something. Mm -hmm. Oh, crank it again. Yeah, we've got uh, continuity issues between those two. So there's power to it. Let's sand it. Maybe adjust the points. See what happens. Yes. Very nice. Stick. Look at me. Teaching today's youth. Next up, how to evade your taxes. I already do that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've got spark. Next step is obviously fuel. We'll throw some in here. Ooh, God. Oh, Jesus. For six bucks, aka two gallons. No! <laughs> Try three! I think the vent's clogged. There we go. Now well, she took two gallons just fine after soaking the whole boat in gasoline. There's a vent over here on the side with a hose leading off the tank so all the air can go out when you're adding fuel. And Jesse disconnected it and it took it just fine. So, must be clogged. Probably a mud dauber. All right, electric pump is hooked up to the old tank. I doubt it draws anything. It's an electric pump. They don't work like that, but we'll see. Try it. She's a runner. She sounds real nice. So. Got it up to 1500 RPM. Ooh. Go for it. good runs damn good potentially winterized when it was put away so it's probably full of oil all right well it's about time we go find ourselves some supper and hit this again in the morning sounds like a great idea good morning ladies and gentlemen it is now july 3rd we have one more day today to finish this boat and hopefully get it up to north iowa tomorrow i am now digging into the motor over here on the side of the block we've got some weird like flex seal tape mat thing and one of these rust stains is a drain the other one is a crack 
That's got some epoxy of some sort on it already that I don't recognize. Some kind of block weld probably. It is leaking a bit, so I need to get some water in this, see if this is even a good motor. There's a chance that it was never winterized the last time it came off. And there's a chance I throw water in it and it just starts dumping into the transom. I hear a bunch of water. Hmm. I'm gonna go on a limb and say there's a fitting missing right there. <laughs> just maybe. But it made it all the way through the block and I don't see any wet spots on the side, so that's good. Got a plug in there, it's not the right one, I'll have to fix that later. But let's see if we get some water out the back. Well, I don't know if that's where it's supposed to come out. Oh, that's right, there's a lot of exhaust noise from back in here. I bet that rubber boot that's supposed to make it come out the prop is junk. Now what does that mean as for our weekend on the lake? I don't know. Maybe, hopefully nothing, and that's a problem for later. All right, well while the battery charges and that hopefully unfloods, I am gonna go ahead and dig into the electricals and get something working on this boat because currently nothing does. Okay, so if you join me under here, immediate problem I see, the main fuse is missing. These big pink ones coming to the amp meter are gonna be the battery, or well, the alternator, really. And as you can see, coming off this side, we have one of the key and one of this main fuse right here, which is missing, as are a couple fuses from over here. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit, by which I mean shove fuses in spots and see if anything comes to life. All right, so it's been a few minutes, but I got her all fixed. This right here, this little doodad, is the negative bus bar. And someone had the grounds plugged into the top of the positive bus bar and kept blowing this main fuse. So they took it out and wired the front light and some other things to be full time. Now it's all fixed the way it's supposed to be. Fuel gauge comes on, oil pressure gauge comes on, temp gauge comes on, RPM comes on, amperes come on. I got a few blown fuses in there, but I've got navigation lights. The blower motor fuse is blown. We've got a bilge pump. And we even have, <laughs> yeah, check that out, a fish finder. <laughs> Let me play with this power tilt a little bit because I still have nothing here. And then we'll be done with electrical. All right, got some oil in the hydraulic drive. This is the last piece of electrical to diagnose. I think it's, well, the switch is broke, but I think we got wiring connection issues. That should be down. No. That was interesting. <laughs> the turbo kicked in on it. Yeah. Three years with the lines open. She's probably about empty. Or junk. These are all options. <laughs> Sounds great that way. Nothing? Nada. I do declare, Jesse. I think the pumpy la baba is bad. I also think it is obnoxiously hot outside today. There is no wind. There's no wind and there's so much humidity. Let's go see if we can find a pump. Mm, yes, the boat. As you can see, still on the ground. Still got the lines off. And pump two is in. As you also may be able to see, there's a ton of oil in that uh, valley down there. Turns out the hose that runs under and then to this piece here and then divide side to side is like completely shredded. So I have to find a whole hydraulic hose and I cannot do that in time because if you'll note, it's 8.30 on the 3rd of July. And that means we failed. <laughs> we will not be watching the 4th of July fireworks from this. I could work on it all day tomorrow. No parts stores are open. It's the 4th of July. I want a day off. So we're gonna go take a day off. We will see you guys in a couple days. Have a good fourth. All right, welcome back. It is now the evening of July 5th. The boat has not been touched at all, but it is in the backyard in the shade. Before we get started though, the cats have something to show us. What you guys got down here, huh? Where is he? There he is. That's a totally fine squirrel next to three cats. And they're just chilling. What's going on here, Mr. Squirrel? Oh, hey, there he goes. <laughs> what the hell is going on? 
Oh no, he's playing dead. <laughs> Pops, what have you done to this poor guy? Hey, hey, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Just a little squirrel. What did I just say? <laughs> Alright, Mr. Squirrel, you're on your own. I helped. Alright, back to reality. Because that sure as hell wasn't real. As you may recall, there's that broken hydraulic line that runs from about here, under, and then into this bell housing thing, gimbal housing, whatever you want to call it. That sucker is completely blown to smithereens, so I need a whole new line in there, and there is no way to get to it from the front. Also, I came back here and did some inspections, and there's a bunch of shit missing behind this drive. Like, someone's had this apart and didn't put it all back together. So we need to get this off and get all that fixed. You want to break free? You want to break free? There we go. Now you do have to have it in forward to do this, which I do have. Believe it or not, our gasket didn't even try to survive. It's obliterated, so I'll have to get a new one of them somehow. Both our water line and our exhaust are not hooked up. Let's see what I can do to get that gimbal out of my way, because I still can't even kind of get to those lines. God, this is going to suck. Actually, you know what? Everything with boats suck. Even if they're free. Alright, so I just had to do a ton of Googling to figure out how to get this hinge pin out of this pivot housing, or whatever you want to call it. And there was literally one video online, specifically this one, Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1 early model hinge pin removal without uh, probably expensive tools. Yep, expensive tools DIY. This guy did a great job explaining what the hell's going on, but essentially there's this literal nail that goes in from this hole. It goes all the way through and then it's bent up at the end. So you take a punch, you straighten it out, and you pound it out. And then you turn the wheel and do it on the other side. I just wanted to show you guys this if you have a Gen 1 Alpha 1 and you don't have the nice hex ones that everyone else has. There we go. Alright, those are hinge pins. I need to get this drive shaft bellow. The exhaust bellow is missing. The shift boot bellow thing is broke, and the water hookup that's supposed to come out right here is not hooked up. It's just chilling right here, so that would have been big bad. I'm going to fight those off, and we'll start figuring out what the hell we got to do to get that hose out of there. It's probably going to be from the other side still, but this all needs redone anyway. All right. There we go, she's off, and it is dirty in here. But that's kind of to be expected when that is the exhaust, and it's not connecting to this, which then connects to this, which then comes out here, where it's supposed to. Instead, it's just in here, ruining everything. As you can see, this is torn. This was not hooked up. This is all busted to hell. So definitely going to clean all this up. Unfortunately, we've got hard lines from left to right. I got a block right here, which means that cable, or that hose that's bad, exists entirely on that side of the motor. So this did nothing as far as fixing that hose, but I know how it works now, and I can inspect everything and fix a bunch of shit. Alright, time to get greasy. <laughs> Alright, so, here's the plan. Actually, first let me get you caught up. Everything back here is cleaned up, looking good. I spent a little time down here trying to get to that hose, which you can't even see on camera. It is impossible to get that hose off with the engine and this plate and the exhaust still attached to the boat, especially the exhaust. That's the main problem. Yeah, there's no way in hell we were going to make the 4th with this one. Maybe next 4th of July. Subsequently, I have been able to get our hose out, and as you can see, it was completely junk. You can see that fitting back in there, which I've since cleaned up, but that is how buried that thing was. There was absolutely no getting it, because remember, there was a whole motor right here. When I took the hose out, I leaned against something and it fell off. That something was the forward mount of the motor. It used to sit right here, and it went doink, <laughs> and I said, uh-oh, and picked it up which means there is no wood left under that forward mount. So with that being said, we either ignore it, get creative, or learn how to do fiberglass work. 
And honestly, I might take the fiberglass option because that I could cut that out and put some two by fours in there. Let's go ahead and get the death wheel out, cut up this piece right here, and start putting some new two by fours in there for that forward mount. Yeah, I should have known cheap or free boats are far from cheap or free. Ooh, fiberglass dust, my favorite. Okay, well now I've got a crooked hole in my boat. We'll keep up with this and be back. Mm, yes, rotten wood. <laughs> wow, that is bad. It's like pulled pork. Mm, yes, oak brisket, my favorite. I don't know, but this is junk, that's for sure. Yummy. Well, that one's rotten too. If I had to guess, they're all rotten. But only one of them needs to be structural anymore. Let's get the shot back in here and clean all this shit out. This will be fun. Oh uh, yes, relying on my wonderful carpentry skills once again. Bonk. All right, there it is. Is that what it came with from the factory? No. Is that what we're gonna do? Yes. We've got a green treat two by six. We ripped down to four inches, shaved the edges, stuffed it in so it's set up against here and here. It's damn solid. And then we found some old piece of hardwood something that was in the shed here and cut that down the length and stuck it right there. They are at the exact height of the old fiberglass. So let's go get the caulk gun and glue that old piece of fiberglass back in, which will give me my two points I need to drill. Do that, get some new bolts in this sucker. We'll be ready to put this motor in in no time. Well, while our wonderful glue monstrosity dries, Jesse is going to tackle the trailer lights. While he does that, I am going to tackle everything in here and get this guy rebuilt. I got a kit off Amazon that gives us <laughs> an exhaust bellow, a new drive shaft bellow, a new shift boot bellow, a new gimbal bearing and everything back here. So let's get to work. Gimbal's out. Our day's been cut short. We Dang did right. get some work done. Everything but the exhaust bellow hooked up. We got a new gimbal bearing, new U-joint bellow, new exhaust bellow, new shift cable boot, and the water tube is finally hooked back up. Everything there is done. Jesse has been busy over here. You rip those off. Let's see how your wiring is. Let's see if I'm any good at it. Hey, there we go. All right, right blinker. Well done, sir. There's still the whole no paperwork to, thing to oh. deal with, but I got a new boat. That's not a bad idea. We could do this all over again. Yeah, no. All right, we're back with the boat once again. It's been a couple days, specifically a weekend. It's Monday, uh, July 10th. So clearly a little bit past the 4th, but we're, it's close enough. This morning, Dad came down and walked me through. He recently had surgery, so he couldn't do any of this himself, but he walked me through some fiberglass work, and we did this. It's kind of hard to see because of the shade, but that right there, that whole section right here is all new fiberglass that we put in this morning. I didn't know crap about fiberglass. He knew a lot about it because he used to build both Triggs trailers, which were built out of Belmont, Iowa. Uh, they were a fiberglass bodied trailer. And when he was my age, he used to build fiberglass racing boats for a company called Profile that was over in Sumner, Iowa. Long story short, there's fiberglass in the boat. Someday we'll do that again on camera and I'll have dad give you guys some tips. Now for stuff I can talk about with experience, I have the bellows done back here. And here's all new rubber for all of those. I had to run to town and borrow this bellow tool from Mike. Uh, I thought I could get away without using it. I cannot. So if you need to do the bellows, this one will help you with that exhaust. You have to take this guy out which is a set screw that holds, I believe, a push pin in. I ended up having to drill the whole thing until it all came out, popped him off, pull this rod out, reach in, grab that bellow, pull it on, put the hose clamp on. And then after that, I cleaned her all up, shoved a bolt in there, she's good to go. Speaking of clean up, that is what's next. I need to clean up these surfaces, get all that ready for its new gasket, and then finish building this out drive. All right, that wasn't that bad, but it was a two-hand job. 
Mmm, yummy. What is that? <laughs> all right, let's get all this cleaned up and get this housing off and get that impeller changed. And I'll show you here in a second why that needs to happen. It's, it's not what I was anticipating the pump to look like. It is not automotive style with a steel pump. You'll see, it's, it's a wear item for sure. All right, so as I mentioned, these are very much a wear item. Oh my God, this one's junk. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wait, where is it? Oh, it's, wow. Okay, good thing I decided to do this. There's supposed to be a rubber impeller in here that as you can see, sits non-concentric to this whole ring, it's offset. And as that rubber impeller, which looks like, give me a second, I can show you one here. There we go. This is what he's supposed to look like and he's supposed to sit offset. And as he rotates around, it bends these sprogs. And those bending create a seal. And as they open back up, they push the water out from one of these holes to the other, from one side to the other. Obviously that is nothing like an automotive uh, pump, which is a metal pump that does not actually interfere. This is an ear interference fit pump. Automotive pumps last a long, long time. These do not. So if you get a boat that sits for a couple years, as easy as this is, especially when it's on the boat and you don't have to wrestle it around on a bench, go ahead, take this apart and change it. I think it's literally two, three, it's 11 bolts. I bought this kit off Amazon of 65 bucks for the entire impeller and the housing. No idea if that's gonna last at all, but it'll definitely work better than this one, which as you can see, has completely disintegrated and all of the impeller flights are down there in the pump. Well, quite clearly I have some cleanup to do, so let's get to work and get this all ready to reinstall. Okay, actually, you know what? Pump the brakes for a second. This is a plastic housing off Amazon. No wonder it was $65. This is the original metal housing. Note how it's made of metal. Also, you'll note right here is a shaft seal. And that one has nothing. Literally nothing. So, you're gonna go in the trash can, you're gonna get cleaned up and go back on. This is the exhaust housing. This is exhaust gas in this cavity right here. I would much rather have a metal housing in that chamber than a plastic one with a seal at that to make sure that my engine gets water so it doesn't go nuclear and melt. Let's take that back off, clean this up, and redo that. Now, to align with the splines. Oh, look at that. All right. You gonna kill me? You gonna stay there? Okay, that's done. Let's get some bolts back in this and get it back on the boat. On to the next problem I haven't found yet. Oh, good morning. Again. This morning I ran the town, got some parts, got some tools. Again. I took some soap and a scrubby and scrubbed this all out, drilled our holes for our mounts and our drain, found some paint in the back of the shed. I have no idea what it's from. It seems to stick to stuff and be the correct color though. So I thought, what the hell? Let's go ahead and paint all this in here while we're here. As you can tell, it looks a lot better than that fiberglass. This is all latex paint in here anyway, so I figured if it's good enough for the boat manufacturer, it's good enough for me. Either way, that's where we're at right now. I'm gonna put some of this on, let it dry, put our front mount in. We can finally hook up that hydraulic line, which was the whole reason any of this came out, and then get the motor back in its home. What do you say, Mook? Yep, yep. All right, our engine bay is all painted up. It looks great in there. As you can see, I've got the forward mount on there with new hardware into the new wood underneath the new fiberglass. So that is nice and sturdy finally. While that dries, it's time to finish everything on the motor itself. We need to do a fuel pump still. We need to do an oil change while we're in here. We're going to pop this cover off and see if I can get some RTV in place of this gasket. Cause as you can see, just sitting here, over the last few days, this thing has been just leaking all over the place. We also have a new water hose for this, uh, some zinc for the oil, some oil for the outdrive. So I'm just gonna take a bit here, finish up everything there is on the motor so that hopefully, well that's dry in a few hours, this can drop right into there. Let's get it going. Okay, after a little investigation, I've decided that these are pretty much identical. The only difference between an automotive and marine pump is the fact that a marine pump has a second diaphragm somewhere in here. So that if this starts leaking, it doesn't let oil into the engine case. Not really something I'm worried about right now since I don't have time to order the correct pump. 
The only other thing I could see is if this is supposed to be a push rod style where this is pressed with a rod instead of rolling against a cam, this rod may wear out quickly. Uh, we'll find out. How about that? Oh, also the bolts might be too short now. I do believe so. Okay, well, I need a little longer hardware. Alright, seems good to me. Except for the fact that that goes right into the dipstick. Son of a... Hmm. Well, that dipstick might be a little flexible. It's just one thing after another with this. Uh, let's hope that was magically from sitting and not from a cracked block. Down a little more. All right, hold there. Well, that absolutely sucks, but it's mostly in. I had to get those springs and Teflon washers, fiber washers under the rear still somehow. It's, it's close to the boat now. All righty, there we go. I've got our bolts in. We've got our springs and washers back in there. There's those springs and uh, felt washers under here because this needs to float on those mounts and have the ability to move up and down. It can't be a solid flush mount. It would snap those tabs off because the front is adjustable. And the reason that is is because of this right here. This is an alignment tool that is used through the gimbal bearing into the coupler on the back of the motor and it will tell you if your motor is in alignment. You should be able to easily push it in and easily pull it out with one hand and that means our motor is aligned and finally we can put the drive back on the boat. Actually real quick before we call it a night for anyone that's been keeping up with the farming series how about an update on the crop? I did have the neighbors spray this year because I wanted to do boat stuff and I didn't want to lose another week and three years of my life by running that haggy. However, our beans are looking great. They exploded over the last three days. And of course, there's a couple spots where something got washed out or the planter missed, but honestly, they filled in great. So yeah, there, that's how the beans are doing. Good morning, everyone. I feel like I've said that 800 times in this video because it's been two weeks that I've been working on this free boat. Yay. The tone of this video has gone from what in the beginning was excitement and going to be a bunch of fun to absolute desperation. It is Thursday. I want this video out tomorrow. No matter what happens, this boat has to be on the water, be it sinking or floating or driving around successfully today. As you can see, our stern drive is on. I had Mook come out and help me roll the motor over while I pressed everything forward. She went right into place. Our gear selector works. I confirmed that I had that all clocked correctly. And with the exception of this line, which I still need off to bleed that pump we were working on a week ago, everything back here is done. I'm gonna go in the boat now and finish up some connections on the motor, get that pump and everything hooked back up. We'll bleed that trim, make sure the motor works, make sure our water pump works. I got muffs for that now. And then we will find the next problem before we go to the water. Alrighty, it's been a couple hours. I've got everything in here good to go. New hoses are on. Everything minus a fuel line is like turnkey. I needed one of these jugs to fill the trim pump, so I decided to go ahead and fill the stern drive, the out drive while we were here. And I got a whole cord in before I realized. I don't know how well you can see it. Probably not great. But you can see it dripping on the ground actively. There's a crack all the way around there hairline crack i never saw oh my god it never ends all that work for a bad drive and a bad motor <sighs> well let's get the epoxy out it's like two o'clock i've got epoxy on here she's all hardened up it's double bubble if it's good enough for a helicopter it's good enough for a boat to go in the water for a half hour i've got the trim pump hooked up wired up and filled up let's see if we can finally make this trim work if you remember it's been so long at this point but if you remember this whole time that's all i was trying to fix <laughs> Why did nothing happen? A little more fluid in it. Let's see if that does it. Holy shit, it worked! Yes! Yes! I finally fixed the trim! You beautiful bastard! Okay, well, there's a bit of air in it yet, but good enough. Oh my gosh. What even was left? What even did we start with that needed done? I think there's still a bolt loose up front, and I still need to fix the 
fuel system. I think it's got a new pump and it needs flushed. It's sticky. Holy shit. All it took was rebuilding the entire everything. And I got the trim pump to work. Let's finish this out and hit the water. All right. Here it is. A finished boat. We have a working trim. We've got a new water pump on our lower. New seals and gaskets. Nice wood stain on the teak. We've got a countless number of new stuff around the motor, new fiberglass, you know, everything we've done in the video. A beautiful clean interior, which, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but we learned that this boat was restored in the last 15 years by like three or four owners ago. New fuses, repaired electrical, all the lights work, we got gas in the tank. Up front, we got a new jack, new lights, and new safety chains, and I tightened up that bolt from inside, which was a lot of fun. For now, let's finally take it up front, hook it up to water, and see if it runs. smokes like a train and still leaks in a few spots but I don't care it runs and we're out of time there is however one last step and that is putting some stickers on the boat that's right I was able to get a hold of the last guy to register it in 2019 whose name it was still legally in and he went down to the DMV and updated the registration on the boat and the trailer so that we completely legally can be on the water there we go. Now when it winds up in the bottom of the lake, they know who to blame. And now to keep it from ever winding up in the bottom of the lake. The Junkyard Dig sticker, which as everyone knows, makes everything immortal. All right, let's go boating. Look, we're actually doing it. <laughs> you look about like I feel. I am so scared. <laughs> oh, I wanna go okay. home. We're going to a shallow lake with no one on it, which means A, you can just walk back and B, uh, you'll have to walk back because there's no one pulling off. I want to go home! <laughs> well, a half hour later, because we live in Iowa and it's that far to a lake, we're here! I'm accepting my fate. <laughs> here we go. Alright, back to the water. <laughs> I don't see anything yet. The trailer's bubbling. Big bubbles. No water? No water. I'm cutting you loose. I'm terrified. You look clear. Well, I have no idea. It goes right over the tire. Cool. Hopefully. Here's your trailer. Don't mind my shorty shorts. Ooh. I said not to. <laughs> Alright. Oh. oh, we've already crashed. <laughs> Dropping the... Yeah, it's down. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Need to turn the idle up, I guess. We're doomed. I didn't bring our booster packs, so we only got one shot at this one. Oh damn, one more time, she floated out. I just hung the throttle back here, you know? This is 
only the spot to drive. Nobody to check the alternator. Hopefully that works. You know the the, the oars work, so we're not taking on water at all. Surprisingly. Here we go, Mook. We're in gear. Oh, we're doing it. We need a little throttle. Our free boat is out on the water. How about that? How about that? I knew you were going to say that. Take a little more. I got the two grand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at the smoke cloud. That thing was definitely overheated. That was. Holy. Yeah. It's not even hurting the fish, just the birds and us. Pretty Saunders sure said if you, you could put around all day, but if you open it up, you got about 30 seconds to shut off. So, yeah, we'll test that a little later. How about that? Well, let's see if our uh, depth finder works. No. That's pretty shallow. Yeah. <laughs> it does not work. Like it turns on, but nothing happens. Okay. Let's get off on plane. Three grand. Oh, it's starting to lean. ourselves an operable boat. I say we enjoy it for a little bit. How about you? There you go, man. Let's enjoy some boats. Think you can do it, Bruno. <laughs> I bet I'll do a wheelie. <laughs> that news wasn't free. Ah, oh, Mook, we're under attack with the Air Force. We're the Navy today. Holy <laughs> kids! Oh shit, they're gonna start carpet bombing us. Meanwhile, everything still looks just as happy or as unhappy as it did at the beginning. I think that's the only gauge that works besides the uh, fuel. I hope. Oh, you're fine! <laughs> this thing is awesome! Look, the rains are coming. No, it's going that way. I'm kidding, it's got way more. Oh my god, we're going to the sun! <laughs> this thing's actually kind of quick. Bring the rods out of it! We're in the water! I think we're what, an hour into this? Yeah. This has been phenomenal. Still no water back there? No weird anythings? I can put some back there. No, that's okay. I'm pretty sure the initial timing's like negative eight. And that's why I can't turn the idle screw any further in. Because to idle, they got that cranked all the way up. And then as you turn the timing up, it starts to idle really, really high. You're like, oh, that must be wrong. No, it's, I put a hundred bucks on the fact that right now, if I threw a timing light on it, we'd see like zero. Because it won't idle with the shit under load. That's a problem for another day. Hi. <laughs> yeah, you're right. More throttle. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! No! <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Multi-use seats? Yeah. Is that the way to do it? Should I be driving with my feet? I'm big smart, no. What are we at, like two hours now, Mook? Just cruising. Mook's having a drink. We're enjoying the severely hot sun and yeah. like 
98% humidity that is Iowa, but check this storm out. This is beautiful. This has been so worth all that shit I went through for this. <laughs> Watch this. Smoke goes up in the air. Smoke goes down in the lake. Up in the air. Down in the lake. Whee! Well, Moot, our storm has progressed into something quite beautiful to watch, even though it's been that the whole time. Yeah. The SS Ignorance is doing just as bad in the beginning as it was now, so everything's fine. Right until I probably pull it out of the water and there's a <laughs> and the drive and the motor are both milkshakes. But that's a problem for next time. Yeah. I mean, what, what does boat stand for again? Break out another thousand. Yeah, this one's break out another tube of epoxy. I did run the bilge pump a little earlier and I got like a, like a squirt of water out. Let's see what she does. Hey, there it is. It's pretty much done, especially if we look away. That's what the doghouse is for, right, Luke? Yeah. It is the seal where you can't see anything. And that is the true spirit of the SS ignorance. Bliss. Out of sight, out of mind. Ignorance is bliss, exactly. Well, let's enjoy our last lap. The last melon. The last melon. With that, we find ourselves at the end of the day on a lake. At the end of two weeks of bitter torture on the boat's behalf unto me. There are a few things to fix yet, but regardless, the free boat is pretty damn good. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, comment below. If you're new to the channel, check out our other videos. There are a couple other boat videos. I think I've referenced a few of them prior in this video, but the, the trim pump is from one of them. Uh, the experience with sinking is from another. I believe there's at least one series where we took a boat motor and stuck it in a truck, which is pretty damn cool. Either way, thank you guys very much for watching this episode. Thank you to Moop, Jesse, my dad, and Mike for all of their help. We'll see you right here next week for another episode of Junkyard Digs. Stay greasy.